Time now for Michigan's number one outdoor radio show, Mike Avery's Outdoor Magazine. Mike Avery has covered the outdoors in Michigan for more than four decades, and that tradition continues today. Outdoor Magazine is brought to you by Jay's Sporting Goods, the Eider Insurance Group, Angler Quest Pontoons, the Forward Corporation, Primal Outdoors, Security Credit Union, Offshore Tackle, Garber Chevrolet, Rapid River Knife Works, and by Michigan Brand Meats. Now, here's Mike Avery. Well, thank you, Ken Hunter, for that introduction, and welcome to another edition of the Outdoor Magazine radio show right here on the Outdoor Magazine radio network on more than 30 radio stations across the great state of Michigan, and so glad to have you along with us as we continue our weekly three-hour celebration of the outdoors, the history and tradition of the outdoor lifestyle here in the great state of Michigan, and occasionally beyond. Well, it is officially summertime now. As you're listening to this radio show, the calendar says summer, but you know that it's uh, it's been basically summer for a while, right? Mother Nature has been a little hot this past week. In fact, miserably hot this past week. Oh, seems too early to be this hot. But what are we going to do about it, right? All you can do is talk about it. All you can do is complain about it. There's nothing you can do about it. Just try to make the most of it. Okay, so here in Michigan, we will know the 24th. What is that, Tuesday? Whether we got our bear or elk tags. You're not going to get your elk tag. I'm telling you that right now. But you might get your bear tag. And for the minor, minor, minuscule percentage of handful of people who do get an elk tag, congrats. And maybe you'll even get a, a, a bull tag. Congrats. I am cautiously optimistic that I will get the third season in the Newberry Bear Management Unit. And if so, I will hunt with Johnny Bowler, the bear whisperer. Johnny owes me a bear. Last time I was up there with Johnny, didn't get my bear. Because... He had another mutual friend of ours on that same property. And that person, Scott, shot a huge bear. I think he shot my bear. So, Johnny, pressure's on this year, buddy. Uh, And I'm just kidding. I'm happy for you, Scott and Johnny. I'm just busting your chops. Kind of. So, what have I been doing? Uh, I've been fishing. I've been fishing. Now, as I'm sitting here in the studio, I actually have a a charity trip scheduled for tomorrow that the weather forecast doesn't look too good for. And then I've got one scheduled for Sunday that looks iffy. Although, as I'm sitting here in the studio on Wednesday, there's no way in the world I would ever cancel a trip several days in advance. But Mother Nature is not cooperating. She did cooperate enough uh, on my last trip that I know I was on the water um, Michigan Brand Meats, the, the crew from Michigan Brand. I call them the Grillo guys. Uh, Patriarch uh, Mike Grillo, uh, Butch, uh, Joe Grillo, his son, Little Joe, who is a riot to fish with because the kid is so enthusiastic and, and he gets so excited about everything and he loves to hunt, he loves to fish. I love to see that type of, uh, of excitement in a, in a young kid. And then uh, Nick Grillo. Nick, a good friend of mine. We fish together quite a bit. It's a pleasure... Well, it's a pleasure to fish with anybody, you know, people who aren't used to being out there and who have never had the experience before. And I can, I can share the resource that is the Saginaw Bay walleye fishery with them. And everything that, that they see me doing is new to them. So that's kind of cool to be able to share. But it's also really cool and uh, relaxing to fish with a crew who knows what they're doing, like the Grillos. These guys are hardcore hunters and anglers, and Nick especially – I mean, Nick just takes one side of the boat. I take the other side. We were running five rods on every on each side, and you gotta kind of have it together to start running five lines out there, five boards to minimize tangles. You're never going to eliminate tangles, right? But to minimize tangles, running behind the offshore OR12 boards. Isn't it interesting that Saginaw Bay years ago used to be a, a, a hot and tot fishery only? 
man, if you weren't running hot and tots, you you know you were nothing. It was a hot and tots, hot and tots, hot and tots. Purple hot and tots with the rattle were the cats meow. Where did that come from? Um, and then for a couple of years, it went to flicker shads. So I bought a whole bunch of flicker shads. Still caught fish on the hot and tots too. And then, and, and I don't know if this is because fishermen are fickle or if because the marketing people drove it or if it's because the forage base on Saginaw Bay actually changed enough that they were looking for the profile of a, of a, a more narrow bait. So now it's flicker minnows for the most part. I mean, spoons, spoons behind jets, behind tadpoles, they catch a lot of fish. Mr. AnglerQuest, uh, my friend Brad Dupuy, fishes nothing but spoons, and he's one of the best fishermen I know. So spoons will catch fish, and crawler harnesses catch fish. Slow trolling on the bottom, uh, you know, a bottom bouncer or suspended fish with a, a crawler harness is a killer tactic. It's a killer technique. They catch a lot of fish that way. I don't like it, and I have fun joking around about it, primarily because I can't troll at 1.2, 1.3 miles an hour. It drives me bonkers. So I troll along at 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, high twos, low twos, pulling crankbaits. The flicker minnow is a great bait. But could I just say that the hook that they put on, and put on them is absolute junk? They're sharp. Oh, my goodness, are they sharp. Um, it's real easy to stick yourself with a flicker minnow hook. And I love the red color, but they're soft. They're brittle. They're absolute junk. And I know you can, you can swap them out with a higher quality hook, and that's what we do after they get beat up. But I resent the fact that I pay good money to buy a bait, and then I have to replace the hooks on it. I mean, you, you catch one fish, two fish, you have to take uh, the, the hooks out with players, and that, those hooks are junk. So, yes, swap them out. Okay, I get that. Can we talk about bait tuning for a minute? Now, this is a concept I think made most famous probably by Mark Romanak of Fishing 411. But your bait, if it's not tuned, is not going to be as effective as possible, and it's going to run off to the right or off to the left, and it's going to cause you more tangles and more hassles. Every time I am fishing with somebody, I say, hey, check that bait to make sure it's running right. And then I'll watch them out of the corner of my eye. And most people, even some seasoned fishermen, will, will free spool it. They'll drop it back 10 feet behind the boat at the most. And if the bait wobbles, they say, yep, it's good. It's running right. You can't tune a bait that way. You don't know if it's running right. You've got to drop that thing back 20 feet, 25, 30 feet behind the boat and then reel in as you're trolling because at two and a half miles an hour, 10 feet behind the boat, they're all going to look like they're running good. Drop it back a ways and then reel it in to put some more speed on it and you will immediately see if that bait is going to blow out to the right or blow out to the left. And you've got to tune it. You do that with a, a, an offshore... Um, uh, that easy tuning tool or a set of needle nose pliers. If it's running to the left, you move the eye to the right and vice versa. And it can be, um, and can, it can be tough. I did treat myself this week. I got myself a couple of new reels because the, the, the existing equipment on the Angler Quest is getting a little long in the tooth, a little rough. Uh, when I realized that some of my reels are like 25 <laughs> years old, <laughs> I thought, okay. All right, you've gotten your money's worth out of them. And if I was salmon fishing, I never could have done this. But walleye fishing, you, you know, they, you don't take out any drag. You don't worry about that. A couple of uh, new uh, Okuma uh, 20s. I love those line counter reels. I also am swapping out some rods. Um, I found a bunch of seven-foot uh, medium light rods I had in storage that were hiding on me. My ideal length for a trolling rod for walleye is seven and a half feet. I don't like them longer than that because they're hard to manipulate. They get in the way when you start, you know, rigging them and setting them. You've got to slide the butt of the rod up behind you up on the floor of the Angler Quest, and it gets in the way. Um, so I found some 7-footers, and I'm liking those a lot. So with those new Okuma uh, 20s and the 7-footers, I am ready to rock as long as Mother Nature will allow. So Mother Nature, I appreciate the fact that you give us northeast winds on Saginaw Bay in the summertime because it blows cooler water into the inner bay to keep those fish there 
longer, so I appreciate that. But could you just blow from the northeast on the days that I'm not going to fish, please? And the days that I'm going to fish, could you give us a 5 to 10 mile an hour southwest wind? Then everything would be good. Speaking of everything being good, I have a new Rapid River knife in my hands right now. My old one actually chipped off a little bit. And this is a woolly mammoth one. This is one of the, the really fancy ones, but designed to be used. Sent it up to, White, uh, to uh, Rapid River. Uh, I thought they were going to fix it. They replaced it. Very nice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now the uh, promo code Avery10 has been expanded. You know you can save 10% on a Rapid River knife if you go into the showroom or if you go online to rapidriverknifeworks.us. But guess what? The folks at Jay's Sporting Goods have jumped on board. You can go into Jay's and Claire or Gaylord or online and, and order a Rapid River there and use the promo code Avery10 and get 10% off. Don't forget about the golf outing to benefit MUCC's youth camp. We still have openings for players and certainly for sponsors. MUCC.org forward slash golf. MUCC.org forward slash golf. That's coming up in like a month now, so get to it. Get to it. Coming up after the break, speaking of Jays, Jeff Poet of Jays Sporting Goods talks about the new Weber Outdoor Education Center. And then Chris Durson from Rapid River follows up on what I was just saying. In our second hour, Jason Karstens on Fishing the UP. Justin Tomei with some news out of Lansing. He also answers this week's Ask Avery question. And in our third hour, it's Bobby Sullivan of Icebreaker Charters <clears throat> compares walleye fishing to salmon fishing, and we wrap it all up with wild game chef extraordinaire Dixie Dave Miner. That's coming up this week right here on Outdoor Magazine. the Outdoor Magazine show in port here on WPHM 1380 AM. You can hear us in uh, Traverse City on WTCM 580 AM and you can hear us north of the bridge in Marquette on WDMJ 1320 AM. Those are just a few of the more than 30 Outdoor Magazine affiliates. This segment of Outdoor Magazine brought to you by Premier Maritime Training. If you've ever wanted to get your captain's license, I think this is your best bet. Captain John Littlefield taught my captain's class, and he can help you become a licensed captain as well. Check out the website pmtcaptains.com for more info. That's pmtcaptains.com. John has classes across the state, and I'm sure you can find one that fits your schedule. That's pmtcaptains.com. Not just a, a fishing charter, but uh, anybody who takes folks on the water for, for money, or uh, even a towboat operator, um, I was coming in the other day, a boat was being towed in by tow boats. The captain there was a licensed captain. So um, scenic tours, sailing, river cruises, whatever it is, if you're taking people out there for money, you have to be licensed, and John can help you out, pmtcaptains.com. Well, when I look back on my career in broadcasting and in the outdoors, uh, I've had wonderful, wonderful partners. And I've told this story a thousand times, but the first partner, and I don't call them sponsors, people I work with are partners. First partner I ever had with Jay's Sporting Goods. When I had a chance to go out on my own, I was nervous. I didn't know I could do it. And the folks at Jay's says, you can do it and we will work with you. So that's why I'm so loyal to Jay's. And ever since then, I've had a very close relationship with the folks at Jay's. And that's one reason why I'm so excited about this new, what do we call it? It's not an attraction. What is it? This new thing that's coming up at Jay's in uh, Claire. And Jeff Poet is along with us to talk about that. It is Jeff's dad, Jay Poet who started Jay's Sporting Goods, and Jeff is at the helm these days. Jeff, welcome back. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me on, Mike. I'm great. How are you? I am doing uh, wonderful. Just trying to stay cool. It's a little bit hot out there this yeah. week. <laughs> yes, it is. I think of Jay's, both Claire and Gaylord, as destinations. But you're doing something there uh, in Claire to make, it, to make it even more so. What's going on, Jeff? Yeah, you know, we call it an, an adventure because it is a new um, a new adventure for us. There's a um, building that's been 
worked on for the last three years. If you've been to Jay's and Claire, you'll kind of notice there was some construction and just things kind of going on across the parking lot. And we finally have that finished and are going to be able to um, show it off. It, it's, it's really a cool thing. Well, uh, throughout that time period, there were a lot of questions. Before the word came out what that was going to be, <laughs> a lot of speculation. I bet you guys had fun with that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I, I think the best one was that it was going to be a super dollar general. <laughs> uh, that shut most everybody down. But no, it, it, it's not a super dollar general. <laughs> what is it? Well, it, it's the name of it is the Jays and Weber Wildlife and Education Center. And there in that building, there are over 200 full body mounted animals from around the world kind of set in the habitat in which you would see them if you were where they were at. And uh, it's, it's just really cool to see. It's very educational. We've got a lot of support material that will be around it to talk about, um, you know, the role that sportsmen play in conservation and wildlife management and, you know, that messaging. And um, we're trying to get that out as well. But it, it's just quite an adventure to even go through it. Well, if I come into the store... Uh, Jay's at Claire. I can see full body mounts there. Yeah, we we've got a few, but over there it's like on steroids. <laughs> it and it's set with the the kind of the proper vegetation and the backgrounds and and it just feels like you're standing in Africa or in you know the Rocky Mountains or you know just wherever. It's um, the Southwest. It's just really a cool deal. So where did these mounts come from? Well, there was a gentleman, um, kind of a long story, but uh, Mr. Wayne Weber harvested all the animals currently that are in that building, and he had a vision to be able to share kind of the message, messaging that I just talked about, and his, uh, you know, he just felt very blessed to be able to um, hunt the way that he did and to harvest what he did and to kind of put it all together and share that experience with others. So. Uh, Mr. Weber harvested them all, and we ended up, uh, like I say, it's a long story, but we ended up um, taking that in and taking that endeavor and going to carry the torch for him. Unfortunately, uh, Wayne has passed, and he's not with us, but I think we're going to keep the spirit alive in that, and it still is just, just an awesome thing to go through and see. The the amount of work that the taxidermists and the artists who created these scenarios and these scenes, the amount of work that went into this is pretty impressive. Yeah, it, you know, it was incredible. So you can you can feel like you're standing, standing in Africa and, and look out and the, the animals kind of disappear into the mural that's in, in the background. There's Kilimanjaro there. You feel like you're on the Serengeti. And the fellow that just did the, the background murals was there for nearly two years. Oh. I mean, he was there a long time. And the people that stuck the animal in place, you know, the, the vegetation and the animals just the way they wanted them, they were there for over two years. So, I mean, it's been a long endeavor for them, and but they are artists, and they've just done an absolute home run job on this. It sounds like a museum, but with a conservation twist. Exactly, Mike. That's what it is. When does it open up That's to the public? Uh, we are going to open July 5th where you can kind of pull in and go through it. We're, we've had some events that we've had already. Uh, we had a car show that kind of used the, the facility as a launching pad, and there's a couple other things going on. But we're still trying to get our feet underneath us. It's a brand-new business, and, boy, it's, <laughs> you, you appreciate you know, we've been in business for over 50 years at Jay's, and you just develop things over time, and you add and you tweak and that. But, boy, to start from ground zero, uh, it's been challenging for us. It takes a lot of time and energy. But once we get it going, uh, we'll be good. So that's why we kind of push that out to the 5th sure. of July. Well, mm -hmm. I can see school groups using this, scout groups using mm -hmm. this. I know I know a lot of, like, a Michigan Outdoor Writers wants to have something in there. I know the Michigan Wildlife Council is pretty excited about this. you got a lot of people mm -hmm. a lot of people on your side on this one, Jeff. Yeah. I mean, it's just, again, the educational piece, uh, just to be able to go in and see the animals, the kids. We anticipate once school starts back up again, 
we'll have bus loads of kids that are coming in. We've we're on a, a bus tour route um, that we worked out that travels comes from out of state typically and comes into Michigan and we'll be one of the stops there. So uh, you just get to see animals that up close and personal in the size and form that they would be that you you may never see in your life. Uh, the amount of time just to to take all that in would be nearly a lifetime. It took Wayne a lifetime to harvest these animals. So um, you can kind of get it in one stop shop and see it. And it's just what a blessing it is to have it. So do you see this as an attraction for hunters or is it something designed to educate the, the non-hunters or is it both? It, it's definitely both. I think hunters like myself that go in, I probably see it through a different window than a non-hunter. But what I see is just, you know, animals that I have pursued and I know what it takes to, you know, the time and effort <laughs> to put all the, you know, a trip together and a hunt. And sometimes you're not successful, you know, and that's, that's hunting. And then I think the window that those who don't hunt, um, I think it'll give them an appreciation uh, for the animals themselves, they're going to be able to see, you know, giraffes and, and elephants and hippos. I mean, things of extremely large size that wow. just don't exist anywhere. And and I, I think that um, it, it's just going to be good for those folks as well. So it opens to the public July 5th. Is there a charge to get in, Jeff? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, it's going to be $10 for adult and $6 for children and seniors. And of course, the, I suspect the parking over in the parking lot is that's that's free. There's no charge for parking. I would imagine. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It has its own parking lot, but if there were more, it's fairly close to Jay's. That's one of the pieces of the puzzle we're still wor wor working on is a walking path to get ah. from the Jay's parking lot to this facility. But there's a fair amount of parking right there at the at the Weber Center itself. So, so did, I, I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Did you have to go out and hire a whole bunch of new people, or did you move some of the Jay's staff over across the parking lot? You know, we're a little bit of both. That, that's the big question, right? <laughs> we, we've we've had the director of the museum hired since last August. We thought we were going to open a long time ago, and that's a that's an incredible story on its in itself. We had a young fellow that was working for us um, just as a cashier up front. He was going to Central Michigan University, and he was studying uh, anthropology and museum management. Oh, geez! <laughs> and he was working for us. And it was like, okay, this this is lining up pretty good. And, uh, you know, would you be interested? Well, yeah, because I thought I was going to need to probably go to Grand Rapids or Chicago or somewhere to work. And if I could stay locally in the area, uh, he was extremely excited. Perfect. So Sam Perfect. Humphrey is our guy over there. And then we're going to use some part-time people, some from the store, and, and we've got some outside folks that was lined up so far but well congratulations on this jeff um as does it have its own website yet is it something posted at jsportinggoods.com where do people learn more it it does it's jwwildlifecenter.org jwwildlifecenter.org okay org. Mm -hmm. you can you can search us on facebook we have uh and and that's probably where when things are new and events going on they'll be posted but there's a lot of good information at that website so jwwildlifecenter.org or the facebook page jeff i'm really excited to see this uh, i know it's been in the works for a long time i know you guys have put a lot of work into it so it's going to be a first class thing and i i haven't been through there yet but i talked to some people who have and they say hey jeff mm -hmm. is not blowing smoke this thing is very impressive so nice yeah, job cool. nice job Thanks, Mike. Jeff Poet of Jay's Sporting Goods. Uh, the website for Jay's Sporting Goods, of course, is jaysportinggoods.com. That's jaysportinggoods.com. Uh, I'm going to tie into this whole Jay's conversation with our next guest. His name is Chris Durson of Rapid River Knives. You know I love Rapid River. You know I love working with family-owned Michigan-based companies. Well, Jay's Sporting Goods is family-owned and Michigan-based. Rapid River is family-owned and Michigan-based. We're going to talk about that and more coming up after the break with Chris Durson of Rapid River Knives. Then, in hour number two, we're going to talk a little fishing with Jason Karstens, uh, UP Fishing, and Justin Tomei of MUCC joins me as well. Coming up right here on Outdoor Magazine.
You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in Alpena on WZTK. That's 105.7 FM. You can hear us in Battle Creek on WBCK 95.3 FM. And you can hear us north of the bridge in Escanaba, WCHT 600 AM 93.5 FM. This segment of Outdoor Magazine brought to you by the Linwood Beach Marina and Campground. Linwood Beach can be your year-round Saginaw Bay fishing destination. They have beautiful facilities, a wonderful campground, beautiful boat launch, great ship store, great people, a complete marine shop. And all you have to do is head out the channel and go uh, east and you'll be right into the walleye. Linwood Beach was the home of the Walleye for Warriors event a couple of weeks ago, and they will be the site of the uh, uh, Angler Quest Owners Tournament as well. That's coming up Ju- July 27th, and of course the uh, our charity golf outing coming up July 29th. Okay, so if you've been around the show before, you know this sound. Uh, uh, here it is again. You know what it is. I just pulled my Rapid River knife out of my pocket, and I opened it up, and I locked it back. I'm a big fan of Rapid River knives. I think a knife is one of the most useful tools anybody can have, whether you're a hunter and angler or not. I mean, I carry this thing with me every day, and I reach for it multiple times a day for for many different purposes. I like Rapid River because they are family-owned. They are Michigan-based. They have great products. And Chris Durson is the guy behind the company. He's with us on the Outdoor Magazine phone line. Chris, welcome back. How are you? I'm great, Mike. How are you? I'm doing good. Listen, has it been uh, un- crazy hot in the UP as well, too? Yeah, it was, uh, it was in the 90, mid-90s here yesterday. It was extremely <laughs> humid. <laughs> That's too much. Hey, Chris, uh, I wanted to get you on the show this week because it just seemed to make sense. For example, in, in my world, um, I had sent some knives up to you guys to get resharpened and then repaired. And it was my brother-in-law, John Craves. We call him Uncle Johnny. He stopped by the showroom and he said, Mike, he says, you weren't kidding. He said, that thing is absolutely beautiful. He was very impressed by it. Um, he got my knives repaired. He got his knife sharpened and he bought some, well, I shouldn't say anything. Maybe it's a surprise. He bought some for his sons as well. Um, Nice job, Chris. I mean, John was really impressed, and I thought, you know what? It's a good time of year to remind people if they're out running around the UP on vacation or even as a destination to stop by and see you guys at Rapid River. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, This is the best time of year, too, uh, to get the full selection of our knives. Uh, we've just come out of a winter. We've had a lot of time to build up our inventory uh, uh, and before the hunting and uh, Christmas season starts. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't um, just say Christmas already, did you? I did. We have a lot of people that have been in our store in October, November, and December that that didn't see much because we were we were running out. All right, and fair enough. Fair enough. They Christmas shop right now. Yeah, fair yeah, enough. Absolutely. Well, I hope I didn't ruin John's uh, Christmas surprise here. But tell us about Rapid River. You've been making knives, well, in one form or another, since you were a young guy. Not that you're an old guy, but since you were younger. Yes, absolutely. I've been I've been in the, the knife industry for 25 years. Um, uh, Rapid River Knife Works uh, was founded in 2002 uh, in my dad's barn. Uh, I started it with one buffer and one grinder on a dirt floor garage, and uh, today we have a, a 12,500 square foot retail store right on U.S. Highway 2 in Rapid River. That's also attached to our, our manufacturing uh, facility where you can actually watch all the knives being built and hand ground and um, laser engraved and all the fun stuff can you like could could you stop in just driving by stop in pick out a knife get it engraved and walk out the door absolutely yeah once you pick out your knife it's about a five minute process to laser engrave it and we do that free of charge right on the spot while you wait kind of a neat experience. I think it's very neat. I, I've seen that done. I also think it's neat that these things are guaranteed for life, whether they break or you break them or, or something happens or they just need to be resharpened. You guys back these things up. We do, and it's, it's, it, it's like a no questions asked type of warranty. I mean, we, if, if there's a problem, we want the, the, the person to have a knife with them when they leave. So if we can't fix it on the spot, we typically give them a new one. As far as the sharpening and polishing goes, uh, if you bring it in uh, in three to five minutes, 
we're going to be able to sharpen that knife just like brand new and, and send you on your way with it. That's interesting you say about replacements because I sent my knife up and my son James. They both had minor things that had gone wrong over the years. It didn't bother me at all, but it started to get to the point where I was, maybe I should have you guys look at it. And you guys didn't screw around. You said, okay, yeah, here's a new knife. We re-engraved it. We're good to go. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in the end, I mean, you want you want everybody to be happy and and. And your knife in particular, I mean, you had a very expensive handle material on there that's uh, kind of a one of a kind piece, and uh, there there was really no way to actually fix that issue. So you you got a brand new one. Well, and 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 I, I was wondering. I thought, okay, was this just because we work together? No, I think you do this for everybody. We do it for we do it for everybody, and we've you know we've built and sold over a half a million knives now in the almost 25 years of business so we're uh you know we get knives in from, from all over the world just everyday use and uh wear and tear and even if sometimes people do some ridiculous things obviously with pocket knives folding knives that kind of thing and but you know as long as you're honest with us we um we do our best to either fix it or or replace the knife if needed you know. hang tight uh, chris i got to take a break here we're talking with chris durson of rapid river knives the website rapid river knifeworks.us rapid river knifeworks.us use the promo code avery10 to get 10 percent off on your rapid river knife you can do that online at the website rapid river knifeworks.us or you can stop in the showroom on US2, just east of Rapid River, and now there might be another option. We'll talk with Chris about that and more after the break right here on Outdoor Magazine. You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in Carroll on two stations, WKYO 1360 AM and WIDL 92.1 FM. You can hear us in Flint on Sports Extra 1330 WTRX, and you can hear us in the Sioux on WKNW 1400 AM. This segment of Outdoor Magazine brought to you by Versa Skins. Just change your skin for the season you're in. Why buy a bunch of different sets of hunting clothes when you can buy one good quality set and snap on and zip on an outer shell of a different camo pattern in less than a minute? If you're looking for big sizes, 4, 5, 6X, or if you're looking for uh, a jacket that, that's designed for saddle hunting, Versus Skins can help you out there as well. The website, VersaSkins.com, that's VersaSkins.com. While you're online, please check out my website, MikeAveryOutdoors.com. Then jump on over to RapidRiverKnifeworks.us. While you are there at Rapid River Knife Works, you can pick out a, a knife. You can order it. You can uh, get it in- engraved. Uh, use the promo code Avery10 and get 10% off. Or you can stop in the store at Rapid River and get 10% off. Chris Durson of Rapid River is with me right now. Chris, there was a situation last week where a person stopped into Jay's Sporting Goods and they said, I want to use the Avery 10 promo. And the folks at Jay's are like, well, we don't even know what this is. But that's changing now, isn't it? Yes, it is. So uh, I had, had a conversation with Bill over at Jay's and, and, uh, about, about that. And I, I, have, uh, I told Bill, I said, I have no problem with, with uh, using that code at Jay's for the customers. Uh, ultimately, we want people to... Uh, be able to hold the knife and feel the knife and pick out the one that, f- that fits their needs. And if, if that means being able to go into Jay's and do that, I'm, I'm, uh, that's, that's an exciting opportunity for everybody. So, yes, absolutely, uh, uh, Jay's is honoring Avery 10 on, on uh, our knives. How nice is that? Now, I know they have Rapid River in the Claire store. Are you in the Gaylord store, too? Yes. Okay, so either well, store. E- either store, you can walk in, go back to the knife uh, counter, look at a Rapid River knife if you like one, walk out the door, use the promo code AVERY10. I think that is so very cool. And that's uh, very generous, Chris, of you to let the folks at Jay's do that. Yeah, it's just a great opportunity. There's a lot of people that won't uh, make it across the Mackinac Bridge and in the next year or two, and so if they want a chance to see one of our knives and hold it and get the discount, um, they have the opportunity to do that at both both Jay's locations in Claire and Gaylord. Chris, of all the different knives you make, all the different blades, what's the most popular one? I'd have to say it's our uh, original Uper Pocket Clip folding knife. The the one of the ones that you have, your favorite. Oh my you gosh! Keep clicking on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> you've heard you've yeah. heard me do 
that before, have you? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I have. And I know exactly what you're doing when I hear it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's such a versatile knife. I can see why people love this. To me, it's the perfect size. I love the pocket clip. However, I did, when Uncle Johnny was up there, I ordered a couple more, and I got some of the mini youpers just to try those out because I, I think there are times when I just don't want the knife sticking out of my pocket. Um, I think I'm going to like to carry that mini youper just because it drops in your pocket and nobody knows you've got it. Absolutely. And we also have our, our next, our newest knife is going to be coming out here in about a week to 10 days. And I'm going to be sending you one for, to, to try out. I know you love field testing. So <laughs> yeah. uh, it is our knives. youper pocket clip that you have with a mammoth ivory handle on it. We're making that same knife in a 50% version of that it's half the size half the size so is is the mini youper half the size already the mini youper is a little bit smaller yet ah. yeah. uh, so it still have a pocket clip on it if you want to have it uh and uh, you know clip to your pocket but it won't be as big of a frame in your pocket but you can also drop it to the bottom of your pocket and not have all that weight there as well that is pretty cool as well when are those going to come out when can the public see those we're working on those right now as uh, as we speak. Uh, the guys are, are grinding away on them. So I'm hoping in a week to 10 days we're going to have them live and up on our website and uh, available in our store now. And then the Jays locations will have uh, them uh, mid That's exciting. Yeah. That's exciting. So, Chris, what's the key to making a good knife? This is a simple question. I suspect it's not a simple answer, though. It's not. Uh, obviously, with, with anything, you have to start with very high-quality materials. Uh, you know, you have to a, a knife. The most important thing is the steel, and you have to start with good steel because you can put the most beautiful handle you want on it. But if if the knife, if the steel is terrible, then it doesn't really matter. You're gonna be you're not gonna be happy with the knife. So we start with all high-quality steel, the best stuff that that we can possibly use, and then from that point on, we. We, we use the best handle materials we can use, uh, and as far as woods and antler and bone, we use all the, all the top-grade materials that, that, that's available. And, Chris, you, 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 you end up making beautiful knives that, in my opinion, are pieces of art. I'm tempted to put it up on a shelf and look at it, but you've told me before that would break your heart. Yeah, absolutely. I, we get people every day that come in and say, oh, boy, I'm going to, you know, after they buy the knife, they stand around looking at it, and they're like, I don't know if I'm going to use this or not. And I tell them, use it, use it. Uh, and when you're done using it for the season, especially the hunting knives that you don't carry every day, you know, display them on your, on your mantle or, or, you know, put them wherever you want. And then uh, when you, after you use them and get them dirty and dull and everything, you mail them to us at the factory store. We recondition them for free. And then it's, it's brand new again, ready for the next season. Perfect. Chris Durson of Rapid River Knives. <clears throat> Appreciate you joining us. RapidRiverKnifeWorks.us. Use the promo code Avery10 to get 10% off. Or walk in the store on US2 just east of Rapid River. It's a very, very impressive place. And if you can't make it north or you don't want to go to their website, go to Jay's Sporting Goods in Claire or Gaylord. You can use the Avery10 promo code there as well. Great partners. Rapid River Knives, Jay's Sporting Goods. I am truly blessed. We'll take a break. When we come back, we're going back to the Ute with Jason Carstens talking a little fishing. Time now for Michigan's number one outdoor radio show, Mike Avery's Outdoor Magazine. Mike Avery has covered the outdoors in Michigan for more than four decades, and that tradition continues today. Outdoor Magazine is brought to you by Jay's Sporting Goods, the Eider Insurance Group, Angler Quest Pontoons, the Forward Corporation, Primal Outdoors, Security Credit Union, Offshore Tackle, Garber Chevrolet, Rapid River Knife Works, and by Michigan Brand Meats. Now, here's Mike Avery. Indeed, this is the big guy, Mike Avery. Thank you, Ken Hunter, for that introduction, and welcome to our number two of this week's Outdoor Magazine radio show right here on the Outdoor Magazine radio network on more than 30 radio stations across the great state of Michigan. This indeed is a radio show. For three hours each week on more than 30 stations, 30 radio stations across our state. 
And I do believe the best way to listen, if you can, is on your local AM or FM station. If you can't, if your local affiliate doesn't carry all three hours of the show, or if you live in some small part of our state not covered by the broadcast signal, it's nice to know there's a podcast version of the show available. It is the same audio. It is the same content. It's just available somewhere other than on your local radio station. You can hear the podcast version of the radio show on my website, MikeAveryOutdoors.com. It's on my Facebook page, Amazon, Audible, Twitter, now called X, LinkedIn, Apple, Music, Google Play, iHeartRadio, yada, 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 Deezer, Odyssey Player, yada, 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 YouTube. I put it on YouTube. And right now there's the, the only video version of the Outdoor Magazine radio show right now is an excerpt from the show called Behind the Mic. Every Wednesday morning, because Wednesday is the day that I record, uh, typically, the first segment of the show is recorded as part of a live stream. So that is the only video version that you'll see on YouTube. The rest of the show is just audio, but uh, it works out, believe me. And people listen slash watch it on YouTube. I do like podcasting. Sometimes it it may seem that I'm not a a big fan of it. I am. I think podcasting is great because it's a great way for anybody to get the message out about what you are passionate about, whether it's the outdoors or something else. You you can take your phone and record a podcast and upload it, and it's there if people want to listen. I do monthly podcasts for Offshore Tackle, Angler Quest Boats, and Primal Outdoors. Now, we're taking this week off from a podcast, but next week we will do a Primal Outdoors podcast, so keep an ear out for that. Regardless of how you are hearing my voice, when you are hearing my voice, I appreciate it so very much. There's so much content out there these days. We are bombarded by content and shows and podcasts and radio and TV and video. The fact that you're hearing my voice right now means a lot to me. I would not be able to continue to do this without your support, and it means a lot. I told you at the end of the first hour we were going to head north in our second hour, which is what this is, and talk with Jason Karstens of True North Guide Service. You can find him on Facebook and YouTube. Jason, welcome back to the show. How are you? Good morning, Mike. I'm doing well. Jason, i got to tell you, I find you to be a very interesting man, a man I have much respect for. As a public servant, you're doing a lot for uh, the people of our state. As a family man, I see your videos. I see your pictures of you and those, your beautiful family, these two young girls that you have just, uh, they're, they're just outdoor. Man, they can't get enough of the outdoors. And I know that's from you, Jason. Nice job, buddy. Oh, it's not just for me. It's also from my better half, uh, for sure, but... You know, we just try to expose our girls to all that there is to do outside because there's so much better things to do than sit on a phone. Well, and it looks like uh, they're enjoying it. And they're in the Sioux. I mean, you got you got so many opportunities right outside your backyard. Yes, uh, this is definitely an exciting time of year for us. Um, it really has kicked off a little early this year. Um, with this hot weather uh, that you have sent up here. <laughs> no, well, don't blame me, man. I don't want it here. Man, I think we reached uh, 92 yesterday up here in the UP. So oh. we're not used to that this time of year. <laughs> so so uh, let's, let's back up the calendar here a little bit. I've been trying to get you on the show for several weeks now. And because of work, uh, you were tied up and couldn't make it. But you, you were able to sneak down into my beloved Saginaw Bay in my honey hole the other day, and you did pretty good. Compare compare your fishing up there to down here on the bay. Got to be two different worlds, isn't it? It, it really is, um, and it's, uh, I'm fortunate enough where it's only about a three, three-and-a-half-hour drive uh, to get down to your world, um, and it's, it's fun to be able to see that type of fishery down there um, doing as well as it is. It's, it's really a treat and an honor to, to go on down there. And then you come up here, and we fish for our species that we're blessed with up here. Um, so, no, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, uh, up there you've got silverfish, you've got clear water, uh, colder water. Um, what, do you, what do you specialize in, or what do you think is your um, – what would you like to see people come up and fish for with you? So my primary focus is two different species of fish. Uh, which are completely opposite, uh, which kind of makes it fun because I can 
if one's slowing down, I can bounce to another one. Um, so typically first thing in the spring, I am fly fishing for smallmouth bass. And right now I'm transitioning over to fishing for Atlantic salmon, uh, completely opposite fish. Um, and primarily what I do with the Atlantic salmon is I also fly fish for them. Um, you don't have to fly fish for them. You can troll for them. You can cast crankbaits for them. You can jig for them. It's, it's really endless for that. And that goes on all summer long um, along with the smallmouth. So the smallmouth is kind of my backup. Um, but uh, my original love is definitely these Atlantic salmon. Atlantic, sorry, so many people are so excited about this fish uh, that appears to be, there's no downside to it. Um, you know, a lot of people say in Northern Lake Huron are hoping it fills the void of kings. Uh, what, do you, what, what do you like about that fish, the Atlantic? They're such opportunistic feeders, and uh, they're such a fun game species, and they're a wonderful uh, table fare as well. Um, I really do think that they are the future of the Great Lakes, other than our Chinook and Coho programs that we have here in the state. And I truly hope that there is a broadened uh, stocking program for them. Uh, they are fragile when they are small and being raised, but once they're released, um, they really they really do quite well in, in our Great Lakes system. Well, and we did just have that outbreak in the hatchery uh, BKD in with some Atlantics. Uh, DNR uh, uh, yeah. fisheries biologists say, hey, it's, it, the number sounds big, but it's a small percentage of the fish that are released, so let's hope that doesn't cause any, any big uh, hiccup. You mentioned fly fishing for the Atlantics. i got to be honest, Jason. When I hear somebody say fly fishing, I get a little nervous because it's an area that I don't know anything about. And, and for me to come up there and fish the St. Mary's with you and fly fish, I would look like a fool because I don't know anything. I don't know how to do it. Absolutely not. Actually, if you have no experience, you're my perfect customer, Mike, um, because you don't have your own, I don't want to say bad habits or assumptions as to how you think that you're supposed to cast, but you're going to be open to, okay, how do I do this? Hey, okay, let's try this. And that's really my goal with guiding is trying to teach a new technique and uh, go for there so that you can do it on your own. Um, it's, it's not just about um, catching fish, but it's also learning a new way that you can also do in your home area, potentially, whether it's for Atlantic or for another species of fish. And that's what, it's, that, that's what really excites me is taking people out that haven't done this before to teach them something that they can maybe take on and who knows, maybe they're going to take it back to their area and learn a, a side technique to that, mm -hmm. that they might end up teaching me a new, a new way to do something. So that's, uh, that's the fun thing. Um, I often take people that had never fly fished before and it's a riot and it opens up a new world to, to them as well. Okay, so if I just couldn't get it, if I couldn't get it through my thick skull, could I throw a jig and a twister tail out there and be effective? Could I catch fish that way or some similar Absolutely. way? Absolutely. And I, um, I often have uh, spinning rods with me. Um, or if uh, there is a trolling bite, I can have that kind of as a backup too because there's, there's times where that is extremely effective is pulling crankbaits and, and trolling or trolling with spoons, but um, you can cast jigs and there's times where that outfishes the fly fishing. Um, that's what's neat about these fish, these Atlantics, is they're opportunistic feeders. So depending on what's happening in nature, they may be on a uh, bug hatch, or if there's not bugs hatching, then they are often chasing smelt. And so then you can use whatever uh, presentation is going to be uh, beneficial, you know, to you and that you're comfortable with. Jason, I, you know, I talked about the St. Mary's, and this is where you're at primarily. Are you finding fish along the entire stretch or just specific spots? They concentrate in specific spots. But, um, like, earlier this year, I do a lot of uh, trolling for them in deep water in my angler quest down in Detour uh and out into lake huron and as the summer progresses more and more fish migrate up the 48 miles of the st mary's river to sioux st marie which is where they are all released for our our area uh the hatchery 
is right in town. It's actually at a hydropower dam, and they get uh, higher concentrations there because that's kind of their home water, mm-hmm. and there is just a plethora of so. Uh, got gotcha. you. Hang, t- well, hang, hang tight, Jason. I'll follow up on that and more. i got to take a break here in the Outdoor Magazine show. We're talking with uh, Captain Jason Karstens of True North Guide Service. You can find him on Facebook and on YouTube as well. He's based in the Sioux. He fly fishing for Atlantics, whitefish, smallmouth, jigging, lake trout, and other adventures, he says on his Facebook page. If you're looking for a great adventure, get in touch with Captain Jason Karstens. We'll take a break and talk with him more right here on Outdoor Magazine. You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in uh, Sheboygan on Big Country Gold, WCBY, 1240 AM, 100.7 FM. You can hear us in Holland on WHTC, 1450 AM, 99.7 FM. And you can hear us north of the bridge. Let's go to oh, let's go to Newberry, WNBY, 1450 AM. This segment of Outdoor Magazine <laughs> is brought to you by <clears throat> my good friend Matt Smith. Matt Smith Outdoors is his official PR title, right? Okay, well, let's get to one more specific. Matt Smith Outdoor Realtor. Longtime friend of mine. He's an expert at finding recreational properties and vacation homes, and he can help your family turn a dream into reality. Learn more online at Matt Smith Outdoors on Facebook, sorry, and Instagram. And by the way, if you're looking for a new home as your primary residence, Matt can help you out there as well. That's Matt Smith Outdoors on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, while you're poking around online and you're on Facebook, as you, know, you always are, all of us are a lot of the time at least, go to True North Guide Service. True North Guide Service is the Facebook page and the company of Captain Jason Karstens. Um, Jason was talking before the break about the different fishing opportunities. Jason, we were talking about where you find fish in the St. Mary's during specific times of year. So where are you finding them right now? Well, right now, uh, we're kind of blessed. We're there all over. We're in a great transition time right now. We have Atlantics that have already showed up uh, in the Sioux. We do have residents uh, that never leave. Um, but we still are great fishing down at the northern end of Lake Huron at the mouth of the St. Mary's River trolling uh, for them as well. Um, as the summer progresses, most, the majority of the fish are going to migrate uh, on up to Sault Ste. Marie. Um, but you, there is still a trolling bite all summer long uh, down in northern Lake Huron at the mouth of the St. Mary's. Uh, would you rather troll or would you rather fly fish? Boy, I, I, my personal uh, preference is fly fishing, um, but they are a riot to troll with. They're just a, they're such a sporty fish. Uh, their Latin name is salmon salar, which means leaping fish. <laughs> there are fish that spend more time out of the water than in the water when you hook them. They just tend to go absolutely ballistic. Like a steelhead. A riot. It, it, I think even more than a steelhead. Um it's a riot, and yet, as a guide, it's also a breathtaker because you're just hoping <laughs> that that fish stays on for the client uh, so that they can uh, achieve what they've been working so hard trying to cast uh, or been trolling for and, and fighting on the end of the, end of the line. So, um, But it is it puts on quite a show. So it's, it's, it's fun. One of your um, tactics or techniques that fascinates me the most is when you guys hook off or hook up, tie on to the um, to the dam. Now, are you still able to do that? We are still able to do that as of right now. Um, it's been a little bit challenging. Uh, there has been uh, construction that's been happening the past couple of years uh, at this hydro plant. Um, and so when they do that, uh, the current gets shut off. And when there's no current, there's no fish. Ah. Uh, so you kind of got to watch what it is because there's no set schedule um but when you can do it um it is a very unique uh way to fish um it's beautiful we're fishing in 18 feet of water it's gin clear sometimes you can see the bottom which is 
probably very unfamiliar to your home Yes, <laughs> that would freak me out. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's beautiful. You can see the fish below you, um, which sometimes is a little bit tormenting uh, to the clients um, if they're not in an aggressive mood uh, at that time. And then all of a sudden there's a light switch and they get aggressive and all that worry goes away or frustration. Well, let me ask you uh, what I think is going to be a stupid question. As a guy who's not used to fishing crystal clear water like we would find in the northern lower or the UP or even Lake St. Clair, if you can see the fish, they can see you. How do you fish for a fish that you're looking at each other? So I've said it many times, these fish are very unique. They're so accustomed to seeing boats. They are not boat shy, Um, and that's... The one thing clients always ask me is, and that we have a conversation, is what do I need to provide or bring? I provide all the gear and bring refreshments, and and what I say is you need to bring some rain gear just in case because of our Michigan weather. Um, and the second most important thing you need to do is bring polarized glasses so that because you're going to be seeing fish, and oftentimes we're actually targeting a specific fish. We can see them in the water, and we're trying to make a cast to that fish um, so that's that's one of the biggest differences there and and unique things about our clear water as opposed to uh something that has a lot more sediment in it. And, and you bring up another point too it's kind of a side point but for people who are not used to being on the water if you're ever going to head out with a charter or a buddy or something sunglasses a hat a raincoat, and maybe a light jacket, because you don't know what you're going to run run into. But if you've got a small bag with you, just throw that stuff in there, toss it under the seat, and you're good to go. Absolutely. And don't forget sunscreen. As sunscreen, well. yeah, 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 yeah. So, no, that's the, that's the biggest thing with uh, going with any charter or guide is have those important conversations beforehand so that you have your expectations. Because us as guides, we want to make sure that one, we're – fulfilling your expectations, but also preparing you for the realistic expectations, whether it's the time of year and what to expect um, and or what the current fishing conditions are. Um, But it's also important to let your guide know, you know, what you want to take this guide service for. Is it to look for a trophy fish or are you looking for numbers? Um, And because we might be able to tailor that trip for you or at least steer you on the right path. Okay, so you might approach a day differently if a client says, look, I don't care if I get many fish, but I want a big one, versus somebody who says, I don't care about big fish, I want to catch a lot of them. You can actually tailor the experience to that? Absolutely. Um, I will. There are different techniques where I might only get one or two bites in a day, but I'm going to look for those big bites, and there's different applications that I will use as opposed to, hey, I know I've got lots of numbers of fish here where I can keep my clients busy, um, but they might not be as big of a fish. Um, So there's definitely different uh, applications and different techniques to be used, but that's where it's important to communicate before your trip um, and and have that conversation with your guide. Your Facebook page talks about jigging lake trout too. Where do you do that? Is that in the river? Uh. We can do that in the mouth of the St. Mary's River out into Lake Huron. Um, I'll often uh, go up into Lake Superior as well. Um, Those are very weather dependent, obviously, because it's in big water. Um, But uh, that is also another very fun trip to do. I know the Karstens family is also a group of hardcore hunters. I bet you guys are looking to next Tuesday, the 24th, uh, with some anticipation. You know, uh, Actually, we aren't this year. Um, we just have uh, applied for points uh, this year. Um, but uh, we have actually focused. Um, we've been trying for quite some time, for, I, I think it was the past three years, and we are going out to Colorado. Oh, elk hunting as a oh, that's right. I remember this now. Tell me more about this <clears throat> because it's a family hunt, and it's a little bit of a non-traditional hunt. It is. Um So my wife and I, we've had many discussions and we want to do all these adventures and take our girls on all these adventures, but we want to do it as a family, which we both understand definitely makes hunting situations more complex um, as far as logistics. Um, But 
we are excited. We're going to go out to an outfitter out in Colorado that I have found and been working with, and we're doing an archery elk hunt with the family. I realized it, having four people uh, trying to do spot and stalk uh, elk is, would be very hard. But uh, I have an outfitter that is actually willing to um, or can set us up into pinch points, actually sitting in blinds. Um, and on like alfalfa fields. Um, so it's going to be kind of like a hybrid whitetail slash elk hunt uh, as far as the style of hunting. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. Now, is that a bow hunt or a gun hunt? This is going to be a bow hunt um, because <laughs> why not? Why? why? <laughs> my, my, wife, <laughs> my wife's dream is to hear elk bugle in the wild um, and go on a hunt. So that's what we're going to do. And this is, we're going to have a heck of an adventure, whether uh, we get an elk or not. And we're looking forward to this. Last year, we went into Northern Ontario and we went moose hunting archery uh, together. Um, We weren't successful. We saw one bull moose uh, at a far distance away, but uh, the weather didn't help us there. It was almost as hot as it is today up there. (laughs) Well, th- that that sounds like such great fun, and and you talked about you know the importance of talking with your guide, your fishing guide before a trip. This is a great example of talking with your hunting guide ahead of time too, so you're all on the same page, and and they can tailor or they can try to tailor to what you're looking for. I think this concept of hunting elk from the ground uh, with your family there in the blind with you is very exciting. But how, man, I mean, well, you're not going to fit all of you in that little wraith. You're going to have to get another blind. Well, you know, we're, uh, we're on the hunt for a blind to uh, get us uh, to, uh, to get us all in, to have enough room. And uh, so I'm excited to see uh, the new blinds that are coming out. Um, hopefully that can, you know, work on this concept because I know we're not the only family that likes to hunt together. Um, I'm thinking about, uh, and it's not, it's not a primal blind, and I can't think of the name of it here, but it's a blind that my son and grandson took to Ontario a few years ago for a, a bear hunt, a bow hunt, and, and there was two of them in there and plenty of room for more. Let me figure out the name of that, Jason, and I'll shoot you a, a text later because that might be absolutely perfect uh, for you because they do make them. They do make them, and you're going to need some room, but boy, boy, that sounds like fun. Well, we just need Primal to come out with a uh, uh, Rave 270 double XL. Well, listen, I know a guy who might be able to put some pressure on Primal. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I shouldn't say pressure. Make a suggestion. So, all right, we'll see where that takes us. Well, uh, listen, I, I think. Go ahead. I think there's a need for it out there. So, um, I, I think it's something to something to look at. Bob Ransom, if you're listening to the show, there is a request for big, big Primal blind. All right, Jason, always good talking to you. Good fishing. I can't wait to hear the story about your uh, elk hunting adventure out west, and you and I will stay in touch. Absolutely. Thank you, Mike, for having me, and uh, you need to get on up here and let me take you fishing. I know, I know, I know. I certainly do. It's something I want to do. Jason Karstens of True North Guide Service. You can find him on Facebook and YouTube. True North Guide Service. He fishes out of the Sioux. Great guy. A lot of fun. And you got an angler quest, too. How cool is that? Take a break here in the Outdoor Magazine Show. When we come back, we'll check in with the folks at MUCC. This time, it's Justin Tomei, and then he'll stick around for the Ask Avery segment, too. the Outdoor Magazine show in Houghton Lake on the Twister, 92.1 WTWS. You can hear us in Lansing on WILS, 1320 AM. By the way, uh, the Twister is 92.1 FM. And you can hear us north of the bridge. Let's go to, uh, let's go to Manistique, WTIQ, 1490 AM, 95.3 FM. This segment of Outdoor Magazine, Speaking in North of the Bridge, is brought to you by, and you heard this before, the company that makes a product that makes this sound. That's the sound of my Rapid River knife opening. We had Chris Durson of Rapid River on the show earlier. Uh, He's talking about a new knife coming out 
Uh, it's a smaller version of this popular Uper folding knife that I have in my hands. He said it should be out in just a couple of weeks. As soon as I can get uh, an image of that, a picture of that, I will post it so you can see for sure. If you go to the website, uh, rapidriverknifeworks.us, or the showroom on US2, just east of Rapid River, use the promo code Avery10 to get 10% off. Now the new news... You can also use that Avery 10 promo code at Jay's Sporting Goods in Clare and Gaylord to get 10% off on your knife. How cool is that? The website for Rapid River is rapidriverknifeworks.us. That's rapidriverknifeworks.us. Another website I think you should be aware of and check uh, on a periodic, a regular basis, MUCC.org. That's the website of Michigan United Conservation Clubs. Justin Tomei with MUCC with us on the Outdoor Magazine phone line right now. Justin, welcome back. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great. Just trying to stay cool like everybody else in the state of Michigan. Oh, yeah. So, listen, uh, I would think it's kind of a slow time of year in Lansing, but, uh, I don't know, apparently there's things going on. It, it's the opposite of the slow time of year in Lansing. It really? is going absolutely insane with uh, the budget and schedules and plans, and everything's changing sometimes on an hourly basis right now. What would you like your members and my listeners to know about? Well, I, you know, I saw, I saw your, your early pre-show this morning and one of the things that kept coming up was our mentor hunt yes. um, bill that expands um, hunting opportunities to individuals with special needs both youth and adult under the mentor hunting program and um, you know that bill got unanimous passage through the house it would have had all 110 votes but one representative was absent um, to my knowledge there has not been another piece of unanimous legislation passed this year um, and now we're, we're waiting for some movement on the senate side um, so that that's sitting there waiting and that's one of the plans that have changed uh, because of budget stuff and the razor thin majorities in both chambers um, you know political bickering I'll call it is getting in the way of good policy Um, and the legislature is laser focused on the budget right now now that's also some good stuff I think we've talked about it on air before that sportsmen against hunger is we're expecting some significant investment in sportsmen against hunger mm-hmm. in this coming budget. But the legislature may be done by the end of next week, packed up and out of town for the summer um, and maybe until December. December? Why December? <laughs> it's an election year, so they're, they're uh... eager to go home and start campaigning. <laughs> um, if we're lucky, we'll get a week or two of session in September. But uh, realistically, we may not see the legislature in Lansing again until after the, the general election. That has got to be extraordinarily frustrating for a guy like you, who this is your this is your area. This is what you deal with. Yeah, it can be. When, when I have stuff sitting there languishing, especially good unanimous policy, that that's would be extremely frustrating. Um, you know, come deer season, I won't mind it so much. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we're we're hoping that this bill doesn't get our mentored hunt bill doesn't get caught up in the politics of the day, and they recognize good policy. But um, you know, maybe something we have to come back and finish in September. You mentioned deer hunting. Um, NRC is going to meet here very soon and take up some deer issues, or no? Yep, we got two meetings in the next few weeks. The first is a special work meeting up at Treetops. Um, that is a. Uh, it, they call it a work meeting because there's some different statutory implications. Um, they're still bound by the Open Meetings Act, so that meeting is open to the public. I believe it's on the NRC's website, that that, that listing. Um, for those individuals that cannot make it, I will be streaming that meeting on our Facebook page. Um, but Commissioner Tom Baird has said the public comment will be welcome, um, but he intends to be very judicious with the t- um, amount of time he gives folks and, and try to not repeat duplicative uh, public comment. So sure, sure. if you're interested in going, please check it out, you know, weigh in. Otherwise, I'll be streaming it on our Facebook page. And then, yeah, the July NRC meeting where all this is going to come to a head. And we'll see what deer regs are going to look like for 2024 and the future of Michigan deer hunting for at least the next couple of years. When you called it a work meeting and then you said treetops, I'm thinking, I bet you Justin's taking his clubs in the back, too. Uh, clubs and fishing pole. I'm planning on going fishing and golfing while I'm up there. So <laughs> basically, if I can get a lobbyable official there, it's work. So I can go do what I do. What oh, I need man, to do. do I hear what you're saying there? <laughs> Absolutely. All I got to do is take a guy on the boat and it would take one picture and post it. And it's like, okay, it was a legitimate work trip. Yep. Hey, speaking of golf, uh, the um, fundraiser for MUCC's youth camp is coming up. It is July 29th, West Branch Country Club. Um, I know. 
you and Steve have been working hard on it, and it sounds like it's plugging along, and we, we hope to see everybody there. Yeah, mucc.org forward slash golf. We still have openings for players, and we can always make room for sponsors if you would like to play and or sponsor. Hey, don't wait till the last minute. We'd like to get this thing locked in so we know exactly what we're dealing with so we can make as much money as possible for MUCC's youth camp. mucc.org forward slash golf. We'd love to see you there. You don't have to be a scratch golfer. If you just want to go have some fun, maybe smoke a cigar, maybe drink a beer or not, I don't care. But just get out and enjoy the outdoors and raise money for a good cause. It's Monday, July 29th at the West Branch Country Club, mucc.org forward slash golf to play and or sponsor. We'll take a break here in the Outdoor Magazine show. When we come back, Justin is going to stick around and answer this week's Ask Avery question. It's an interesting question. It's one I've asked myself. Justin will help us out after the break right here on Outdoor Magazine. the Outdoor Magazine show in Houghton Lake on 98.5 WUPS. You can hear us over in Muskegon on WKBZ, 1090 AM, and you can hear us in The Thumb on WMIC in Sandusky, 660 AM, 95.3 FM. The Ask Avery segment is brought to you each week by the good folks at Security Credit Union. Security Credit Union loves to work with outdoorsmen and women And they can help you with your next outdoor adventure. Check them out online at securitycu.org. That's securitycu.org, the way the Ask Avery segment works. This is your chance to to get involved in the content of the show, to bring up something that you've been wondering about, uh, something you want me to answer directly or something you want me to pass on to, say, DNR or MUCC or or somebody along that line. The best way to get those questions to me is to send me an email to mike at mikeaveryoutdoors.com. That's mike at mikeaveryoutdoors.com. That is what Emil Mosley of Genesee County did. He says, Mike, this may be a dumb question. It's not. It's a question that I've asked myself repeatedly. He says, who comes up with and passes proposals into law when it comes to Michigan wildlife rules and outdoor activities that aren't voted on by the public? Is it DNR, MUCC, MWC, which is Michigan Wildlife Council, NRC, Natural Resources Commission, or just the state legislature? Do all of them have a say, or do they all work together on such things? Emil, I think this is an outstanding question, and actually I can't think of a better guy to address this than Justin Tomei of MUCC, who deals with this stuff on a daily basis. Uh, uh, Justin, a, a really good question, don't you think? I, I do. I, I think that it's uh, perfectly fair, and it's a, it's a good question from an engaged individual. And what's the answer? Yes, all of the above, and kind of. Oh, great. Uh, um, I really appreciate your expertise there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'm going to tackle them separately. The NRC is a little more boring. It's a little more structured. So there are certain regulatory cycles. You know, we do deer every three years, turkey every couple of years. And so some of those things are fairly scheduled. Um, and when Turkey comes up, for instance, the DNR may have some things that they want and they'll include in a proposal. Sometimes it's stakeholders. Sometimes it is MUCC. We'll have a resolution that we passed and we'll talk to the department about it, talk to commissioners, and we can get it on an agenda. Um, sometimes it's the commissioners, and a good example of that is the, the Nyberg Amendment for Steelhead last year. Um, you know, that was something that, that he wanted to do and the commission wanted to do, and so it, they got it on the agenda that way. Um, I hate to beat a dead horse, but the coyote thing this year, that was, that was user group or uh, not user group, but uh, stakeholder group driven. So it, it can come from any sources, but the NRC has a little more structure because there are these regulatory cycles that they generally try and follow. It's outside of deer. It's kind of rare to do major regulatory changes off cycle. The legislature, that's a whole different animal. So some people run for office to do one thing. You know, they, they run for office because they want to get one law changed. Um, but then also they'll get constituents calling them and saying, I, I'm having a problem with X. You know, what can we do about it? And sometimes that actually leads to legislation that hits the floor. Uh, a lot of times stakeholder groups or advocacy groups like MUCC, uh, 
name one, they will take at least some semblance of legis legislative language to a legislator and say, this is something we want to work on. Um, you know, we, we generally take it to one of our caucus co-chairs, sportsman's caucus co-chairs, um, and generally they're pretty receptive when, when, we have, when we have an idea we want to work on. Um, but, we, but we try and take them actual language and a problem and say, this is the problem, this is the solution, and then it goes through the Legislative Services Bureau and lawyers look at it and make it legally right. And sometimes the department. The department, I would say, in a lot of ways is, is almost another stakeholder, almost another advocacy group um, in the sense that they have things that they want to accomplish, and they can take it to the legislature just the same as us. They have a legislative liaison who functionally acts as a lobbyist for the department, and sometimes they take ideas to them. So it's, it is any of the above. I mean, any of those things are, ways, are outlets that it can happen. Um, I would say the NRC, though, is mostly along their structural lines, but legislatively it depends on the issue, depends on the legislator. Uh, of all these different groups you've talked about here, uh, NRC, we are allowed to make public input uh, officially at their meetings. Um, but it's MUCC, honestly. I, I mean, when I, when I look at these different groups involved, and I can think of specific laws that have been changed because of an individual MUCC membership has stepped forward. I, I feel like if an average Joe outdoorsman or Jane outdoors woman wants to, to do something, I think MUCC is a pretty good bet. I like to think so. I'm a little biased, but I, I always joke with folks that I talk to politicians so they don't have to. Um, but I want them to. <laughs> and thank you for I, I, that. <laughs> yeah, I, I want them to be engaged. But at the same time, I mean, our mentored hunt program that we have as it exists currently was the idea of an electrician from door. And it took him a couple of times to get it passed through our policy. But then the next thing you know, he's standing at a bill signing with the governor. So, you know, and MUCC is an outlet for an individual to extend their reach. And I encourage people, if they have good ideas, to join, to give me a call and see what I can do to help you put together a policy resolution and send it through our process. Because you may be the next person standing next to the governor making hunting, fishing, trapping in the state of Michigan better. Justin, always a pleasure. Appreciate your input. The website for MUCC, MUCC.org. You can join there to get more, also get more information. If you want to be a part of the fundraiser golf outing at West Branch Country Club, Monday, July 29th, to raise money for MUCC's youth camp, uh, MUCC.org forward slash golf. We have openings for players and or sponsors. Uh, do not hesitate to join. Thank you for your time, Justin. We'll take a break. When we come back, Captain Bobby Sullivan checks in from the water right here on Outdoor Magazine. Time now for Michigan's number one outdoor radio show, Mike Avery's Outdoor Magazine. Mike Avery has covered the outdoors in Michigan for more than four decades, and that tradition continues today. Outdoor Magazine is brought to you by Jay Sporting Goods, the Eider Insurance Group, Angler Quest Pontoons, the Forward Corporation, Primal Outdoors, Security Credit Union, Offshore Tackle, Garber Chevrolet, Rapid River Knife Works, and by Michigan Brand Meats. Now, here's Mike Avery. Well, thank you, Ken Hunter. I appreciate that introduction. Welcome to Hour 3 of this week's Outdoor Magazine radio show here on the Outdoor Magazine radio network. As we uh, look back, I actually didn't check the forecast for this weekend, but as we are recording the show right now, in the middle of the week, it's hot. It's mug. It's just absolutely miserable. Uh, my last trip out on Saginaw Bay, it was one of those really hot days. But I got to be honest, it was pretty comfortable out there on the water. I didn't realize just how hot it was until we got back to shore. And I was like, "Oh man, it's miserable. It's miserable." Um, our guest this hour, uh, when I talked with him yesterday to set this up, he was supposed to be on shore today. But he had something come up where he's going to run a – he's actually finishing up a trip on Saginaw Bay. As we're talking right now, his name is Captain Bobby Sullivan of Icebreaker Charters, the website icebreakerfishingcharters.com, icebreakerfishingcharters.com. Uh, I think his cell signal is good. Uh, Bobby, welcome back. How you doing? 
I'm doing good. Thanks, Mike. Uh, we do have pretty good service out here today. So yeah, it sounds great. Sounds great. Done. Hey, listen. So so what happened here? You were supposed to be golfing today. You're on the water. What what's up? Yeah, I did not have a trip scheduled for today. One of my only days off this month, and uh, actually one of the other charter captains uh, had a shaft break on his uh, his prop shaft. So uh, he needs somebody to take out the trip today. So I'm out here with his first mate, and we got a fish on right now. Uh, it's been pretty good. Um, well, what a, what a stand-up thing for you to do. I mean, you got one day off. You want to go golfing, but a buddy calls, and you help him out. It's a nice thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, well, and I definitely need some uh, work on my golf game. We went the other day, <laughs> and I need, to, uh, I need to get in shape before the golf outing. That's right, because you have already signed up for the uh, Mike Avery Outdoors Charity Golf Outing coming up in July. I look forward to seeing there, you there, Bobby. It will yeah. be weird to see you yeah. with a golf club in your hand instead of a fishing rod. It will be. I will say I'm not very good at it, but I like to have fun doing it. So You know what? I'm not very good at it either, and it doesn't matter, does it? Nope. Nope, especially with that being a charity event. You know, it's all for fun. So I'm excited to go to it. I haven't been to it before. Oh, good. Well, it's the first one we've had, so nobody has been. So we'll see how it turns out. But let's talk about the fishing. Right now you're out on Saginaw Bay. Uh, you're finishing up a morning trip for a buddy of yours. Uh, I'm not looking for any, you know, don't give up your secrets, but basically where are you at? What have you been using? Could you say the fishing well, was pretty good this morning? You know, it's, it's, you know, a little bit slower this morning than it's been, but we're still, we're probably in the mid-20s right now on fish. Uh, so, I mean, that's, that's a great day anyway, and it's uh, 11 o'clock right now. We started at 7, so... By the time we got lines set, it was probably, you know, 7.45, 7.50. So we really haven't been out here that long. Uh, we're fishing in, we started in about 17 foot of water, and I did probably a, about a seven-mile straight long troll, and I just turned around, and I'm coming back into the waves right now. Uh, basically, I ended up, oh, pretty close to one and two on that pass. You know, I started by the sailboat buoys and just did a long pass through there, through the fingers, and uh, turning, turning back around to get back closer to home. So are you turning around to come in, or are you trolling now uh, uphill uh, against just, the wind? Just just trolling uphill. Uh, we got another fish coming to the net right now. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, uh, and we're running 40 and 60 weighted seals. We're running uh, number five flicker shads and number seven flicker, shad, or flicker minnows. Uh, my jet diver bite has been really good with spoons up until today. I've been doing really good on jets and spoons, those uh, jet 30s, and I've been running those anywhere from 30 to 50 foot back. And uh, most of the spoons that I'm running are pretty much all yuck spoons on those. Uh, I find with those yucks, I can run them around two mile an hour, so I can run them at the same time with these flicker shafts and metals. Your boat is big enough where you can do a troll into the wind and not have it be too much of a problem. Uh, a lot of the smaller boats, even on the Angler Quest, I would prefer to troll downhill, downwind whenever I can. I just think it's, I don't know, it's 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 more comfortable yet it's easy and it's also easier to read the boards. But are there days, Bobby, when trolling into the wind is the ticket? Is it can that be more productive some, sometimes? Some days it can be more productive than trolling with them. I don't know if it's the action of the waves or if us bigger boats when we when we troll with the waves sometimes you start surging pretty hard mm -hmm. and uh we can almost get a more consistent speed going into the waves some days so some days for us i mean most most of the fish i catch are going into them you say you know you got in the mid-20s right now for fish and and you say yeah it's a good day but it's not outstanding I think here in Michigan Bobby us walleye anglers between Lake Erie Lake St. Clair and Saginaw Bay man we're spoiled Oh, we, yes, we are. You know, when, when we come back to the dock and, you know, we're a little grumpy, you know, not with our customers, but just the how we did for the day and catching 15 to 18 fish, you know, it's uh, we're, we're spoiled that we get to call that a bad day. Uh, what about the uh, size of fish for you so far this summer? Uh, size of fish has been pretty good. Uh, I don't think we have. We might have one or two in that 13 to 15, 14 inch range, but most of them are all. 14 to 18 19 inches uh we did get one this morning 23 inches and uh yesterday we got a 25 inch or we got a 25 the day before so we are getting some of those mid 20 fish too and there's a bunch of fish out there isn't there? there there is there is for somebody coming in from outside of the area where would you tell them to start would you just routinely say hey head said to the head to the sailboat buoys or the dumping grounds what's your advice that, that is always a really good place to start. There's fish there all year. 
even in the summer, the fish will still be around the sailboat buoys. And I would tell someone I wouldn't get too worried about like running around, you know, pulling lines, running. I would just what we're doing right here, you know, running two to two four, just set up in one spot and troll in a direction until you get on. And that's normally normally my my plan when uh, when things aren't going my way. I'll just I'll just head a straight line until I get on them, and you're you're going to get on them within a couple miles. So it might be slow for an hour or two, but you'll find fish somewhere. Boy, that is that is great advice because it's easy to chase fish and chase radio reports and chase cell signals from your cell reports from your buddies. Uh, but there's enough fish out there. And say if it's a rough day and you got a smaller boat, if you just put a, a downhill, a downwind troll and just keep going till you get into fish. Yep, exactly. Hey, hold on one second, yeah. Mike. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. well, if we're getting up to where we lost that board at here, so, okay, all right, sorry about that, Mike. We uh, we broke a board off earlier, so we're almost in that area. No, no, I get that. That, that That's that's a good thing to talk about, losing boards and such. Um, did you lose that board? Why did you lose that board, Bobby? Well, we, we had a fish on it. It was on the outside board, and uh, I release all my boards, and actually the line broke in my backing, and it's probably – Probably what I'll have to do in the next day or two is just strip some of my backing off and put new backing on, you know, from constantly, you know, fishing every day, hooking it up in the same spot sure, sure. day after day. So that was just uh, improper maintenance on my part. Well, when you're running as much as you are, as many trips as you are, you don't have the downtime to really go through things like you would if you were a weekend warrior who had, you know, all, all midweek to, to, to tweak things. Right. Yep. You, you try to get most of the stuff done before the season starts. And, uh, you know, I change mono out about once a year on all my mono rods, you know, because they're setting in the sun every day. So about halfway through my season, I'll strip all my line off and put new line on. But, uh, you know, one thing you don't think about is that backing underneath the leg core, the weighted steel. And so every once in a while, I'll just, I'll just peel some of that line off and uh, cut and retie it. What pound mono are you running, Bobby? I run heavier than a lot of these guys do. I run 20 pounds just to kind of keep from that happening, but it still happens. And um, and you mentioned lead and steel. Why one over the other? Because for lead core, for a long time, all we had was lead core. Yeah, all we had was lead core. And uh, the, the, thing, the thing that uh, we're finding uh, with this weighted steel is you've got less line out, so it doesn't take, you know, Bringing in a fish, you have, you know, less room for error as you do with leg core. So uh, a 60 steel is the equivalent of a three color, which is 90 feet of leg core. So you've got 30 feet less of line out there to where you can lose a fish coming into the boat. And, you know, when we're trying for numbers. We're trying to put in as many fish as we can to get in the boat. So uh, pretty much all the captains around here have made the switch over to weighted steel. So is is that uh, I've never used it yet. Uh, is that uh, does it have a braid wrap around it like lead core does? Uh, no. So it's uh, imagine what you know. It's a it's a heavier wire than like a downrigger cable, but it's a uh, I forget how many strands are in it, but it's uh, just like a steel cable kind of. Is so it, just imagine like your downrigger yeah, yeah. cable, but it's thicker and heavier. About about the same thickness as copper almost. So is it less and likely to kink than lead core? The, the, this stuff does not kink. Uh, you know, I've got it on between my walleye rods and salmon rods. I've got it on close to probably 30 rods, and I have not had an issue with Oh, well, I did have one fray on me one time, but that was in a pretty bad tangle. I mean, I can get four of these rods tangled up and um, – I mean, I can get it untangled real quick, and there's no kinks like copper. Uh, it, it, it is really, really nice to work with. Bobby, uh, hang tight. i got to take a break. I appreciate the fact that you're making time for me today. Uh, do what you got to get done here over the next four minutes or so. We'll come back and talk okay. more on the air. We're talking with Captain Bobby Sullivan of Icebreaker Charters, his website, icebreakerfishingcharters.com. That's icebreakerfishingcharters.com. If you say Bobby Sullivan, Icebreaker, I know that name. Well, it might be from hearing me talk with him here on the radio show, or it might be that just a few years ago, one of Bobby's customers on Lake Michigan caught that new state record king salmon, like 43 pounds and change, 44 pounds and change. It was huge. So that's kind of what put Bobby on the map, that and the fact that he's a really, really good fisherman. We'll talk with him more after the break right here on Outdoor Magazine. (laughs) 
you can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in Ludington on News 97, 98, 98.7 WLDN. You can hear us on the other side of the state, Tawas, WIOS, 1480 AM, 106.9 FM. This segment of Outdoor Magazine is brought to you by Killer Food Plots, Michigan-based family-owned Killer Food Plots. You, you know, you put a lot, of, a lot of time, and to be honest, you can put some money into these food plots. So you really want them to turn out. The, 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 the effort and the, the expense that you're putting into them now, why not work with a company that has your best interest at heart? And I'm truly convinced that Rich Grisant at Killer Food Plots wants you to be successful. If you go to the website KillerFoodPlots.com, that's KillerFoodPlots.com, you can see the services that are available. You can see the different seed blends. Um, and don't hesitate to reach out to Rich. He's uh, very busy, but he's also very accessible, and he will return your your um, email, your question, your text, or whatever. And as always, Rich would be the first to tell you, everything starts with a soil sample. If you haven't had a soil sample, that's the first thing you got to do. Killerfoodplots.com. That's killerfoodplots.com. Right now I'm talking a little fishing, a little big water trolling with Captain Bobby Sullivan of Icebreaker Charters, his website, icebreakerfishingcharters.com. That's icebreakerfishingcharters.com. Bobby, let's talk a little bit about the uh, logistics of trolling. You said you broke a board off. Are those the offshores you're running the OR-12s? Yeah, yep, I run them the offshores. Uh, I just run them pretty much stock, as they call them, the orange release up front, the red release in the back. And put a couple of the Sam Pro releases on. Uh, I've got, I'm running braid on my jet divers, so I've got those those ports just specifically set up for the Sam Pro, and I, I'm liking those releases. I know Jason Graham talks about those a lot, when especially when he comes on the show. Wait, Jason's a good, I mean, he's a very technical very detail oriented angler isn't he oh yes he is everything's uh right down to the fine detail with him and uh you know he, he always puts fish in the boat he's yeah. uh, a, a heck of a fisherman yeah he is and a nice guy too he has really helped me out a lot with getting that angler quest in the water earlier in the year so a shout out to captain jason grams of send it charters send it com. right now we're talking with captain bobby sullivan of icebreaker charters he's fishing saginaw bay right now out of linwood beach marina linwoodbeachmarina.com as you look at the back of the boat right now bobby how many lines do you have out uh, right now, I think we have, oh, 14, 14 or 16. What is the secret of running that many rods without ending up with just a giant mess? Oh, my! I mean, sometimes we still get a mess, uh, especially, you know, we were talking about going into waves. Uh, you know, having a good separation between the boards, and sometimes it gets too rough where you can't run that many rods. Uh, but I always try to... Like with my crankbaits, I have my furthest ones on the outside and my closest ones or my closest to the board shorter lead on the inside. That way it uh everything clears when you're reeling in a fish. But uh the big thing to keep from getting tangles is uh, keeping up on your rods where you're not dragging short fish, because if you're dragging a short fish that'll come up to the surface and your other rod will come across it and you'll get tangled up and uh, uh popping the boards when you have a fish on. All right, let's but, talk about I, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. You run your longest leads on the outside, so when you pop them and let the board drag back, it clears your inside rods. Yep, that, that's what that's that's how I do it when yep. I run crankbaits. Some people do it opposite of that and they have good luck, but that's that's the way that I found to work the best. I used now, to run them opposite, but then I started using the technique you're talking about where you you do the twist in the line and you pop the board yep. and so it drops back. Um, that's a, I don't want to say it's bulletproof, but I, I'm finding that to be a really good way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Just about the only tangles we get is when we get uh boards jumping over top of the line mm. on another board when it gets rough out. What about, and I ran into this the other day, if you're not paying attention and you got a, a crankbait, whatever it is, that's way out of tune and starts running squirrely, but still stays in the water, that can get you off into the other rods too. That can, yes. That, and especially, you know, you start running faster and that crankbait blows out the side. That, that'll that get tangled up into another rod. Now you you said, know, every, yeah, every, go ahead. every once in a while when I put a rod down in the water, I'll put it, or like a crankbait, I'll put it on the side of the boat and I'll just make sure that it's in tune. Mm -hmm. Then uh, if it's not, I'll tune it back into place. And when I do that, I don't just let it set there. I'll actually pull the rod forward towards the nose of the boat to make it go faster. And if it's still running true, I'll send it out. If not, I'll 
I'll take a pair of pliers and adjust it. Yeah, thank you. I was just talking about that in the first hour of the show. And, man, those things can be, at least the flicker minnows, boy, it doesn't take much to send them either the, no, other, the other direction. It, it does not. Just a little little pinch with a pair of pliers and an offshore tool. And, I mean, sometimes you can go too far, but, you know, you might spend – two or three minutes getting that crankbait in tune, but it'll start catching fish again. So, um, I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought. Let's let's jump over to salmon fishing now. I was saying as I, as I let you go at the end of the last segment that, you know, you're also a salmon guy. When will you leave Saginaw Bay and head over to the west side? So, right now, my plan is to pull my boat over on July 15th, uh, the, the week of the Offshore Classic. And we, we just pretty much fished the ladies' tournament, that's it. Uh, but I'm going to be over there uh, the week of the Classic. So do you leave the bay because the fishing is dying, or do you leave the bay just because it's so good on the west side? No, I just leave the bay because it, it, that's when salmon fishing normally starts picking up again on the west side. And, uh, you know, fishing for walleyes uh, every day kind of gets old towards the middle of July. <laughs> so sure, it's sure. a change-up, you know, and things to do, so... And I, I love salmon fishing, so I'm always excited to get over there, and I'm always sad to leave it. So these days, how late into the summer is there a good walleye fishery on the bay? Uh, you know, we have charters that stay here year-round, and though, you know, when I'm over there salmon fishing, I, I'm constantly talking to the guys over here, and, I mean, they're, they're putting up 20, 30 fish catches on, you know, almost the daily sometimes. Well, it's got to be a nice change of pace to get over there, see some different water, see some deeper water, some some uh, water you can see through a little bit better, and the fish. Oh, man, those silver fish versus our goldfish. That's a night and day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. You know, eating these wall or, you know, when you eat these walleyes, it tastes a lot better. But, uh, you know, fighting salmon, I don't think you can find anything better in Michigan to, you know, fish for for the fight. So what's the change in mindset and the change in gear and the change in tactics when you jump over, jump over to Lake Michigan? So it's all, all different gear. Uh, you know, I'm not running a spread of, you know, 10 to 14 planer boards. I'm only running, you know, two or three boards a side over there. So four or six boards, but I'm running, running three downriggers. Um, I'm running two divers on a side. So four dipsy divers. I run a high and a low every day no matter if I'm at the pure heads or if I'm out deep. Uh, so the spread's a little different. The gear's different, the lures. But, um, you know, the mindset that I have, uh, I just pretty much got to go out there and find fish. Same way out there, you know, doing marathon trolls sometimes. Uh, I will notice over there sometimes the direction of the troll is key, and you could be off by 40 degrees, and that makes a big difference. I'm putting a lot of fish in the boat just how those lures are running through that water. Tell me more about that. I think I know what you're saying, but this whole concept of underwater currents, I, I, I kind of blows me away. Yeah. So, you know, we have fish hawks that, you know, there, sometimes there can be a mile or two difference down at the ball. And, uh, you know, that affects how your lure runs. And, you know, I don't quite fully know why the direction of troll, you know, maybe those baits are, running weird in the current but if you match up the currents just right you know it can be a big difference in catching those fish so normally if i'm if i have a little slow spell and i'm marking fish and i can watch them come in on my uh fish finder come right up to my riggers and uh if i'm noticing they're not biting i'll start maybe angling my troll a little bit different so i can get something to go and how do you know which direction to angle or do you just try one and see if it works just uh, try one or the other, see if it works. But uh, you, you'll you notice with some currents out there with your divers, you'll see your your divers on one side of the boat will want to creep behind the boat. Uh, and you'll try to match it to where both divers are running. Perfect. I got gotcha. you. Normally, gotcha. once you wh- normally once you get that direction down, that that's when you're going to start getting them. I understand what you're saying. Hey, talking about uh, uh, Mark and Fish, and I, I do want to jump back to the bay here as we wrap this thing up. Do you worry about marking fish? Well, either way, do you worry about marking fish when you're trolling for salmon or walleye, or are you just out there to find fish and the marks are just a confidence booster? Uh, marks are confidence boosters. I mean, when I'm running out 
salmon fishing in the morning and uh, that wind changes direction and i think they might be in close i'll really pay attention to my fish finder if i'm if i'm marking fish or marking big balls of bait then there's sometimes where i'll change my mind as i'm running out and just set up there uh in the bay i don't rely on my fish finder too much because when you're in that shallow water uh i don't ever mark many fish anyway yeah. so you know i set out a spread and let the fish tell me if they're there or not uh but in the deeper water it is nice to you know if you're marking fish but you know you don't know if they're walleyes or not either they could be sheephead white bass perch you know there's a there's a lot of fish out here so it just doesn't mean they're walleyes now the guys that are running sight imaging out here i don't have it on my big boat yet uh i was gonna put it on this year I know on my river boat when I'm in the river jigging, I, I look at that all the time to find pots of fish. But the guys that are trolling out here, they like using sight imaging to see them, you know, in that shallow water. Yeah, yeah. So, What's the rest of your summer look like, Bobby? If somebody's listening to this and say, hey, I'd like to fish with this guy, do you have openings? Yeah, right now, as of today, I've got like July 1st. Then I have the second week of July, I've got, I think, three or four openings before I go over to Ludington. Um, end of July over in Ludington salmon fishing. I have a few dates, but August is booking up pretty good right now. So if anybody wants a day in August, uh, you know, they better get a hold of me in the next week or two. You go, know. go to the website, icebreakerfishingcharters.com. And, and, and I know one day you're not fishing, Monday, July 29th. Yep. yep. All right, Bobby. Listen, hey, again, it was a stand-up thing to do to uh, to uh, help uh, help your fellow captain out, and uh, you're a good guy. I look forward to talking again soon. Yep, yep. And uh, I haven't been calling out all the fish, but we got a little one right now. We got another one on, and we've caught a few since we've been on the phone. So what changed? So, so what? So what? What? What changed? Real quick, did you do something different, or just get into fish? Oh, oh no, just uh, we we've been we've been poking at them. I just ah. haven't been saying that. So. All right. So you weren't bragging. You should brag more, Bobby. No, yeah. All right, yep. Captain Bobby no. Sullivan of Icebreaker Charters, Icebreaking Fish, IcebreakerFishingCharters.com. That's IcebreakerFishingCharters.com. You want to book a, a trip with Bobby? He fishes year-round. He fishes the rivers in the fall and in the spring and in the winter sometimes. Fishes Saginaw Bay. He fishes Lake Michigan for salmon, trout, steelhead, walleye, you name it. Icebreakerfishingcharters.com. We'll take a break here. Lots more coming up. Well, not lots more, but still some more coming up. Stick around. You can hear the Outdoor Magazine show in Manistee. On WMLQ 97.7 FM. You can hear us, uh, I think I already mentioned St. Joe, but we'll do it again. WSJM 94.9 FM in St. Joe. And you can hear us on the east side of the state. Saginaw, WSGW 790 AM 100.5 FM. I'm in the studios of WSGW here right now. Here with Jonathan Dent. John doing a great job. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that so very much. This segment, he's doing a lot better job than he did last week. Last week, well, I, I, listen, I wasn't going to mention it. I wasn't going to bring it up. But there was a problem last week. But he was able to fix it, and you didn't even know about it until I told you right now. And that was very rude. <laughs> hey, if Charlie can take it, you can too, John. Uh, this segment of Outdoor Magazine brought to you by Reader Landscaping. Reader can take care of your lawn and property because it's your nature and our nurture. Let Reader create an outdoor getaway in your backyard. I've had a lot of experience with the folks from Reader in the last week. A uh, crew, a uh, three-man crew, came to the Avery House for two days last week. Now, two full long days. I'm talking like 8 in the morning till 6 o'clock at night. Fortunately, it wasn't quite as hot as it was this past week here, but it was still very warm and very uncomfortable. The reader guys came in there, and they, um, they extended a project that they'd done last year, and it was uh, basically putting stone in our beds around the house and around a water feature that we have. So it involved taking up some plants, putting some new edging in, putting the barrier down, and, put, and, and, and moving some sprinkler heads and taking some out, and then bringing these stones in. 
And it was a lot of work. It was hard work, and the guys did a really nice job. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's exactly what we were looking for. Um, the reader guys do a really good job. Now, my project was a uh, kind of a small project compared to what they're used to. I mean, I'm thinking about this last week when it was so hot. Wouldn't a pool be great? Well, reader can do pools, too. They can do backyard uh, kitchens, pools, you name it. Readerlandscaping.com is the website, readerlandscaping.com. Really, honestly, really good people and do a great job. All right, let me look at the rundown here, my uh, notes here. I want to talk about a few things before we run out of time. Oh, by the way, it is officially summertime now. You know it's summer, but the calendar says summer, so welcome to summer. Um, if you're listening here in Michigan, and most of our audience is... I've taken some grief online in the past. People say, you know, it's a good show, but it's, it's all Michigan. Well, exactly. This is a Michigan-based show. And because it is primarily a radio show, not a podcast, I choose to concentrate on Michigan. So if you are listening here in Michigan and you applied for a Michigan bear or elk tag, Tuesday morning at 12.01, go online to michigan.gov slash DNR or use the app if you get on your phone. Check drawing results. See if you got your bear tag. See if you got your elk tag. You didn't get your elk tag, okay? If you did, it, it, an absolute bonus. And maybe you got a bear tag. I applied for both. I didn't get an elk tag. I know that right now. But I'm cautiously optimistic that I will have scored or I will score a bear tag for the Newberry Bear Management Unit third season. If so... About 12.02 a.m., Johnny Bowler is going to get a text from me. Johnny, I got my tag, and we'll be ready to rock. If I get my Michigan tag, I probably will not go to White River, Ontario for a bear hunt this year. If I don't get a Michigan tag, I probably will go to White River, Ontario for a bear hunt. Love bear hunting. Also, I love walleye fishing. You know that. I've been out on the bay here, uh, Saginaw Bay, on the Angler Quest, having some pretty good trips. Been into some big fish lately. You know, big is a relative term here. A big Saginaw Bay fish. We had one the other day that was almost 26 inches, and we had several in the 22 to 24-inch class, and we had one that was much bigger than that 26-incher that we lost at the back of the boat. Of course, you never lose a small fish, do you? Um... As I'm sitting here in the studio right now, I have a trip scheduled, a charity charter for tomorrow scheduled, but it looks like it's going to be a northeast blow. I have suggested to those folks that we postpone that trip. I also have a trip scheduled for over the weekend. It's looking pretty windy now. We'll play that one by ear. But if I can get out, you know, I, I certainly will. Uh, Rapid River Knife Works, the promo code Avery10, is now honored at Jay's Sporting Goods in Clare and Gaylord and online. So you can go to rapidriverknifeworks.us. You can go to the Rapid River Showroom in Rapid River. You can go to Jay's in Clare in Gaylord or jaysportinggoods.com. Use the promo code Avery10 at checkout, and you can get 10% off on your Rapid River knife. Uh, don't forget about the uh, first annual Mike Avery Outdoors charity golf outing, which is coming up now just about a month away. Um, it is at the West Branch Country Club, Monday, July 29th. Um, I really want to put a good showing on here. I want to fill the field of golfers up, and I want to make as much money as possible because this is a fundraiser for MUCC's youth camp. I'm not making a dime on this thing. Um, MUCC directly isn't making any money. All this money is earmarked towards the uh, youth camp, MUCC.org forward slash golf. You can go there and you can sign up and or sponsor at that website, mucc.org forward slash golf. Love to see you there. I'm kind of excited. I actually bought a new set of clubs this year. Of course, my old ones were 30 years old. More than I wanted to spend, but you know what? It's the last set I will ever buy, so I thought, why not? I will put those to use Monday, July 29th at the West Branch Country Club. Well, and before then, too. Uh, what else? My name is Mike Avery. My website, MikeAveryOutdoors.com. My email address is Mike at MikeAveryOutdoors.com. Don't hesitate to reach out. Love to hear from you. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll wrap it all up with Wild Game Chef extraordinaire Dixie Dave Miner.
I think I heard that music in my sleep the other night. I hear it a lot, but I like it because it means I'm here in the Outdoor Magazine radio studio talking about hunting and fishing, the history and tradition of hunting, fishing, shooting, camping. Also means I get a chance to talk with my good friend, wild game chef extraordinaire, Dixie Dave Miner, who joins us once again. David, how are you? Very nice and hot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no way around that this past week, was it? Oh, boy. I tell you, the heat doesn't bother me. It's just the humidity. Well, and, and, you know, I I agree with you there. But And I'm thinking about something you always told me in the past. When you had the restaurant, I said, Dave, when it's hot, do people come in and look for cool dishes? You said, no, they come and look for spicy stuff, which to me seems kind of counterintuitive. Nope, it's true. I wonder why. People love the, the hotter it is, the more spicy we, are, we always used to cook for them. So is this week's recipe spicy or not? Yeah, a little bit. You can make it as zippy as you like. It's a chili walleye with uh, like stir-fry vegetables. It's a baked dish, and uh. we did this for the show. I can't even tell you how many years ago. Yeah, let's, uh, I, this one's not coming to mind. Maybe uh, walk me through it. Maybe I'll, I'll remember it. Okay, what you need is about 8 to 10 ounces of boneless, skinless filet per person and uh, chili peppers. You can use uh, chili peppers or any of the hot peppers that you prefer, and you can slice them thin or chop them up or however you like. A couple of small zucchinis. The smaller, the better, because they are nice and tender. One large red, yellow, and green pepper. You want to slice everything in julienne, which is French fry size slices and uh, we want everything pretty much about the same size a red onion julienne slice a couple of summer squash same thing a bunch of cilantro and you want to chop that fine or kind of coarse half a stick of butter as much garlic or as little as you like i think this would be a nice dish with three cloves of garlic diced up fine up to a half a cup of white wine because you need to moisten this a little bit the juice of a lemon and a lime, or both, whichever you prefer, either and or. So as I said, you're going to slice the vegetables in French fry um, size sticks, you know, all about the same size, you know, and then we're just going to chop the cilantro coarsely and put that on the side. And so in a nice hot saute pan, you want to add half the amount of butter and saute the garlic fast. Don't burn, constantly stir it just till it's nice and golden brown. Then quickly add the vegetables and stir saute it some more until you get it nicely done for, oh, anywhere four minutes or more. You know, you want to get them crunchy, but still al dente. And then you want to add the wine. When it's boiling, put in the cilantro and then stir and then uh, cook that down a little bit. Remove the heat. You want to get rid of some of that white wine. So you want to make on a baking sheet. You want to make even piles, however many pieces of fish you have. And uh, you stretch, if you got um, smaller walleye that have the, uh, you're going to use the whole fillet. So you want to make this kind of oblong. Lay the fish on top, spoon the rest of the vegetables on top, and then you can squeeze lemon and lime. Or, and then this is the point where you want to add as much chili peppers or whatever kind of peppers you care for. Or you can actually grate black pepper on it for an Avery special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bake uncovered, 350 degrees. And because it's nice and warm, the vegetables are pretty hot already. So it might only take up to 15 minutes. So when the, the fish is done, it'll be flaky. And so take a couple of spatulas and put each pile on a plate. And then uh, enjoy. It's a great dish. We did this. For the show, and uh, we got we used to do this at the restaurant too. People loved it. So you've got chili peppers in this, but remind me, are you pulling, uh, putting? Uh, I know you said you can put pepper. Can you put chili powder on it too? Yeah. Yep. Yep. The spicy chili powder would be great. That's you know, what I'm thinking. Has, yeah. 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 You could do that. I think that's what we did for the show. If memory recalls. I me. think so too. It's coming back to me now. I think that's what we did, and I do remember this as being. Really, really good. I got to be honest, though, Dave. All the dishes you ever cooked and all the dishes I ever tasted of yours, there were some I liked more than others, obviously. But I can't think of one, including Asian carp, that wasn't tasty. (laughs) Remember we did uh, invasive exotics for a while. 
Yeah, well, Asian carp but, is the one that stands out. I'm like, he's going to make me eat Asian carp. It's not something I would seek out in the future, but it really wasn't bad. Yeah, right, I know. Um, we sold it at the restaurant, too. You know, people uh, ordered it like crazy. We bought a whole uh, a whole case of this stuff. We had it flowing in from Indiana. <laughs> well, good. And it went really good. I, I couldn't believe it, but it sold like crazy. Good. Bring it in from Indiana as long as we don't have to bring it in from our own water here. Thank God we don't have that many. David, always a pleasure. Talk to you soon. All Thank right. Thank you very much. Wild game chef extraordinaire Dixie Dave Miner. Talk to him soon. Probably talk to him next week because he here, he's here and joins us every week here on the show, and I do certainly appreciate that. Uh, my name is Mike Avery. Again, this show is called Outdoor Magazine. If you haven't picked up on that by now, my website is MikeAveryOutdoors.com. That's MikeAveryOutdoors.com. The email address, again, Mike at MikeAveryOutdoors.com. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. Let me know what's on your mind. If you have a question for the Ask Avery segment, email that to me as well. In the subject line, put Ask Avery. And uh, don't forget about, um, well, Baron uh, Baron Elk Apps will find out um, Tuesday morning at 12.01. And don't forget about the uh, golf outing, mucc.org forward slash golf, if you want to get involved. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next time right here on Outdoor Magazine.